Hello and welcome to the show. Now, if you like your big luxury barges from the late 80s and early 90s, Forza Horizon 4 actually does not have too bad a selection. These cars often don't find their way into too many games, uh, but it is nice to see them. Cars like the BMW 850, I love the 850 CSI. It's probably one of my favourite, if not my favourite of the BMWs. No, it is not a race car. No, it is not the best handling BMW ever made, but there is something incredibly cool about it. Likewise, the AMG Hammer. Also incredibly, incredibly cool. Yes, they are very big, very heavy. They have a decent chunk of power. Not crazy powerful, certainly not by today's standards, but they have a good chunk of power for the era. So, we were going to take these two and a selection of other cars from, uh, from, the, from the era, similar styles of vehicles, and go racing. Build them to A-Class, because they vary in starting PI. And see what one would be fastest. So, for our first race, we've come to the Bambara Coast Circuit. And I don't really know what the state of my car is, is going to be around this one. Um, I've, gone for a, I've gone for a little bit of a middle-of-the-road build, and that either is going to work wonderfully or be terrible. Because I've got sport tyres on the car, which are good, they're not the best tyre. I have gone for a maximum weight reduction because, of course, these vehicles are pretty massive and heavy to begin with. Uh, and it's about 450 horsepower, which in A-Class isn't actually as much as I was expecting to get from this machine. Uh, we'll see pretty much on this one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we're definitely not the quickest launching of the cars. How are we through the corners? I'm hoping pretty good. I would say I think the Hammer is the best looking car here, and that's coming from somebody who absolutely loves the 850R. Uh, 850R. Um, 850 CSI. Why are the two cars the same bloody... No, I do love the A50R, but uh, yeah, I love that CSI. I think it's a, a beautiful car uh, in its own in its own way. And oh, yeah, the hammer is just better. <laughs> I love I love it. Uh, it is wonderfully. I don't know. Beefy, I feel, is the word to describe this car. It's brilliant. Oh, we are not going to get a pass on the Jaguar. I'm not quite sure what is leading the way. It looks like the Bentley, the bit of the oddball to throw it in to the mix here, is leading the way for now. We'll see if it can hold on. We get to the inside of the Jag. That'll move us up a position. There goes the Buick on the outside. Uh, the American contingent. We've got a couple of those. Uh, throw it in for good luck. And it's quite entertaining. The Buick is the one here with the smallest number. The American car is the one with the smallest number of cylinders being a six-cylinder. Everything's having to use its standard engine and driveline, etc. Uh, so, yeah, that's what it's standard. Oh, V6. Oh, we're going to sneak a pass to the inside. That is the hammer up into sick. There's a big fight going on up at the front. Annoyingly, I'm just a little bit too far back. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to catch up. This might not be the circuit for my car, for my build. I might work a little bit better on twistier circuits. We shall have to wait and see on that front. Although, if they keep fighting like that, it's not going to matter. We're all going to catch up anyway, because they're basically three wide for the lead. Everyone's stacked up behind the... Ben oh, well, the Bentley has released everything. <laughs> At the moment, I mean, they've got one of each car is up there. One Buick, one Beamer, one Merc, one Aston, one uh, Rolls. The only thing missing is the Jags, uh, which were likely to struggle, let's face it. Yep, three wides towards turn one is going to go interesting. I've gone way too wide on my own down there. That's going to cost me a heap of time and possibly any chance of joining that fight. Don't clobber the curb through there. That's not going to work. Uh, Bentley is dropping down the order. I might dive across the grass a little bit. Uh, not sure that was the cleverest decision I have ever made. Uh, can we catch the Bentley? I mean, I'd like to be able to pass the Bentley here. Bentley's, again, it's a little bit out of... It's not quite the two-door uh, luxury coupe. But, I mean, it is luxury at the end of the day. It's big and heavy. Uh, it's surprisingly good to drive, I must say, the uh, Turbo R. You wouldn't expect it from it, necessarily. Uh, it does look like the 850 is chasing after the leader. i am not had the best of races. As I said, I'm kind of hoping and hoping my car gets better at uh, more twisty circuits, which is a weird thing to be hoping for, considering what I'm driving. But we do seem to be able to carry some good corner speed. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Now, there is a wide body kit option I weren't allowed to put on for this. We're trying to keep them kind of closer to... Oh, well, that's standard, but kind of, yes. And 
the standard card isn't actually yet particularly big rear tyres, only 285s. Not that I'm having all that much trouble with traction. I was expecting... I was expecting more power from this and with that more wheel spin and everything, but it doesn't quite... I mean, 450 isn't much in A-Class. So... Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of an odd one. It drives quite nicely. It does feel like I've gone for that quintessential try to do a little bit of everything with a build and I'm not sure it quite works. Not 100% not so. The leaders are too quick for me. I don't think I've got an answer for them to. Certainly not around here. I'm not that far away from the group ahead. We're just annoyingly watching this amazing battle that I'm desperately trying to be a part of, but not quite able to. And in trying to be a part of, maybe overdriving the Merc a little bit, the Aston's trying to get a podium away from the other hammer. It's also a brilliant name, I shall say, for a car. It, it perfectly... It's a perfect name for this car. You can really attach it to many vehicles and it works quite so well. Um, the Callaway Sledgehammer is the other example I can think of, but it also is very fitting. Uh, we have pulled away from 7th, but it's not going to be much more than that, I don't think. Annoyingly, unless there is any shenanigans on this final corner, or final section, which... Yeah, I mean, we're catching a little bit. I think we outhandled some of the cars ahead of us, but we are not close enough to do very much. Okay. Race number one of the Barge Touring Car Championship, or Barge... Yeah, you know what, Barge Touring Car Championship, sure. We'll go with something along those lines. Bit middle of the pack for me on that one. Had some pace. Fastest lap. Eey. Fastest lap, we were there with third, fourth, and fifth. Just couldn't match the, the lead to. Up next, we head to a street circuit. Prince's Street Gardens track that I hope is going to work better for me. Uh, oh, fingers crossed. We have a good spot on the grid. That's helpful. The Buicks are at the back. <laughs> That's also helpful. Uh, you and can't stay connected for longer than a couple of minutes. Well, for longer than it takes a load of race and crashes out immediately. So we're missing... Actually, sure, what car. Uh, possibly one of the BMWs. We've only got one. Of the, I, think, yeah, I think we are missing one of the BMWs it's supposed to have in here. Anyway, uh, yeah, I thought like this track could work for me. We've got a good spot on the grid. We've only got a Jag ahead of us. We know we're not the fastest starters here, uh, but the Jag is even worse off the line, of course. BMW is, okay, kind of even in terms of that initial launch. We have got to the front of the race. How good is that turning? Oh, not as good as the 850, though. That's annoying. Can we have a sneaky little bit of a look at the inside? We can, but we're going to go out of ghost mode. It's me and the other hammer that have come out of that corner. We've slipped to third. Not ideal. I think we will outrun Chris's car. We do. We actually do outrun Gliska's down the straight. It's curious. Um, didn't quite expect that to uh, be the case. We won't push Gliska down there. The BMW then will outhandle us by the looks of it. Uh, that was very close to getting... Not the checkpoint. We hit the fence and lost all momentum. Chris has got brave around the outside. We're going to try and cut back on the exit of that corner. Might be a bit of a long way around to try and make that one work. Okay. Made a little bit of hash at the end of the lap there. Oh, this guy got all sorts of out of shape coming through turn one, but has gathered it all back up. Oh, come on. Long gears maybe help quell a little bit of wheel spin. Still moving around a little too much for my liking. The other hammer is having a look. It is now underneath for the exit of the corner. I think Liam is in an XJS, perhaps? Uh, can't actually see. I think it might be in a Jag. That is trying to claw its way back up through the... Or going to claw its way through the field, I should say. Not so much back up through. I don't quite know where it started. Didn't, don't remember seeing it towards the front. Uh, there we go. We are... Just about all right around that penultimate corner. Glisk is very sideways in the final term. And the BMW, none of these cars are easy to drive, per se. Everything's moving around a little bit on this one. Can we do anything? Turn one is going to be our best bet. We've got to get... We've got to really hope that the BMW slides out of the final corner. Has a big slide out of the final corner. Chris has got way more grip than I do through these corners, but no straight line speed. And these are really half chances for a pass as well. There's no real easy clear-cut opportunity for an overtake for that car. I presume, again, these are A-class, so you can build them how you chose. 
potentially the car behind me has race tyres on it. it. Might be it might explain why it's quicker through these corners and why I can run away down the straights because well, race tyres chew up a lot of PA. Um, could be some other different parts. Can't be any lighter realistically than I've got mine. So yeah, it wouldn't be that as I went for max weight reduction. This time around the BMW is good through the final corner. We are neat and tidy, a little bit of debris to deal with. Uh, but we are much too far back. We've got to watch out a little bit for that jag. Uh, that jag in fourth is actually going quite quickly around this track. Yep, the <laughs> that is caught up to us. Now, with any luck, it can get distracted fighting with... Well, fighting over third, and I might have enough time just to hold on. Because, well, if I've got the power car, defending at this track isn't too bad. We can defend quite easily. Well, not quite easily, but... It is easier than some tracks to defend at this one. Uh, there's only really a couple of corners that are realistically sensible overtaking spots, and a lot of the time the power car can pull a margin. Uh, what else have we got coming, Joyce? The Bentley, I think, potentially, as well. I've got a really itchy nose that's not helping matters. If I end up sneezing, I do apologise. <laughs> Can't catch the Beamer. I haven't got an answer for it. Not around here. It's just too good handling, that car. Uh, we are again going to get far enough away. Oh, it does look like we might have lost a Jaguar to potentially a missed checkpoint. I made a mistake at turn one. We've got one more lap to try and fend off oh, for this second place. It is much closer than it has been before, but all I have to do is park the car through here. And even if I run wide on the exit, I don't care because we outrun it. <laughs> Like, that's that you park it on the first part, doesn't matter what happens on the second part, because I've got so much more straight line speed than the other AMG. The Buick is faster than both of us down here, though. That is a concern for me. That Buick has got some speed, that's for sure. Will we be able to get far enough away? Oh, it's not really where I wanted to be through that penultimate corner, but it's so difficult to make anything happen at the final turn. Uh, especially if I've got the acceleration off the corner, which I will have. Oh! <laughs> Chris lost third on that run to the line. That Buick is fast. Ooh. Oh no, Chris didn't in the end. Mercedes just held on by tiny, tiny fractions. Yeah, that Buick is fast. Uh, the two AMGs, the Bentley, the Jag, the Aston Martin was quick, uh, as was... Oh no, wait. Yes, Aston Martin was quick. Uh, Liam fell down to 8th. This is the, the Jag. So 55 2 down, further down, but now it's the missed checkpoint. Two hammers on the podium, but uh, we were kind of. Mm, not quite got the pace. So I do believe the connection issues might tell us something about the durability of these cars. I mean, while I've never owned any of these, they, they're the sort of car that you expect to buy for a fairly large sum of money and then spend an absolute fortune keeping running. And it turns out we can't keep get 12 of them on the grid at one, <laughs> any one time, which is about right, really. Um, yeah. Let's see what happens. Like as cops, I start fairly close to, to the front. I think the Buick is going to go shooting past and off into the distance, and I don't think we're going to see it again. I think the 850s might do a similar thing. We might be fighting for around that, that third spot on the podium. Uh, we will have to wait and see, really. Uh, the BMW is good off the line there. Uh, and then the Mercedes pulls on it after that. Here comes that... Uh, that thing is damn quick. Uh, the BMW is good through the corners. I just don't really trust this car particularly. I don't know, it's not bad to drive it. You know, I can't really give it crazy criticism. It's just doesn't quite have the grip perhaps some of the others do. Looks like the 850 is about to get slaughtered down the straight as here comes everything. Uh, yep, pretty much. Bye bye BMW. We're on the tail of a jag. Can we have a look for a way past? It's not going to be through here. Pretty sure we were pushing it down there. Oh, lost the back end. The jags found the rocks and the secondary rocks. <laughs> We're going to have a dive to the inside, and we will take that second place away. The Jag wants to fight back. Can't quite get it to the inside there, though. I really don't think I've got anything on that Buick. Uh, I mean, the Buick... Okay, it's a little bit of an oddball in this one. It's probably one of the lightest cars in the field, with a full, full weight reduction. But it's not that much lighter than the uh, AMG to start with. The 850 is quite a heavy car, but... Uh, yeah, that Buick is not that much lighter. 
And the... Okay, that's curious. Huh. So the Buick has great acceleration, but it's top end. It didn't have an answer for the hammer. That is curious. So we get off this corner and it outruns us initially. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe made a mistake somewhere. Or maybe it runs out of gears or... See, now it's pulled away again here. Why did it by the start finish line? I think it runs out of speed a little bit somewhere. Um, either way, definitely the hammer is much more enjoying this circuit. We've had a good run through there. Am I close enough to have a dive? No, not quite. The front end's not great on the hammer. In fact, we have got a rear gunner Mercedes up in second place. Could we sneak away past the... This is not really the script that I was expecting here. If I'm honest with you, this is a little bit unusual. Yeah, like after that 120 mark, the Buick doesn't really have an answer for the AMG. <laughs> that is curious. That is not what I thought we were going to see here. Uh, we are slowed down into Turn 1, and we have fought our way back to the lead of the race. The only issue we've got is we've got to defend at the hairpin, and this is where the Buick is better. It has the initial acceleration off of these corners, but I don't. Come on, we need to get to that 120 mark again. <laughs> As we get there, we're safe, I think. Here comes the Buicks having a look, and there comes the power of the AMG. We've just got to not balls this one up now. Like that. Oh, that was on the ragged edge of what was able to, uh, to be got out of the car. Keep that. Buick behind through this section. If we can get out of here in one piece, then we're in a little bit more safety. God, this is a nerve-wracking race. I really don't want to screw up with this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, getting speed out of this car is kind of... I don't know. It feels difficult to get speed out of the Mercedes. When it clicks, it does click. I mean, now the Buick has the advantage of the slipstream all the way down here. I know. It just can't match. Once you start getting to these higher speeds... The Regal just cannot quite match the AMG. Through turn one and two. Horrible section, very easy to make silly mistakes through there. Still got the Regal right on the bumper. As we come out of the hairpin, maybe not putting wheels on the grass. That was a foolish idea. And the only plus point we get with this is we can kind of defend down here. I feel like the Buick's going to draw alongside and it's just going to run out of power to really do very much. Because we, as soon as it draws alongside, we hit that speed where it doesn't have... Oh, that's very brave from Impega. I would not want to be there, but it might work to get the pass done if I cannot hold it, which I can't because we lose the back end ever so slightly. That's a hell of a brave pass from Impega. I mean, we gave the car space. I knew it was there. I got very close to ending up in the rocks because there isn't a huge amount of grip in the hammer, but yeah, almost ended up in the rocks. Now... Get the car off that corner well, and it's going to be into turn one. Is where we're going to have to make something happen with this. We're going to have to utilise our straight line speed. And we're not close enough, really, to have a big dive here. Oh, that's a problem. That's a part of the view. It might have got us now. <laughs> Unless it makes a mistake, which it has actually a little bit through there. It's not been the best of runs for the Regal. Uh, it slithers a little bit. It's just that initial drive off the corner. Ah, we gave it a good fight. I just couldn't quite match it. That was a, it was a great pass. It was a great pass to get that one done. <laughs> like that is, is one of the scariest passes you'll do on Horizon 4 is the outside of this corner. That is not a place you ever really want to be. And if I got around the outside, didn't clip any of the rocks, and yeah, got the move completed down here. Uh, and has now actually pulled a bit of a gap on me. Uh, it was a great fight, but I haven't got an answer to the real. The 850s don't really seem anywhere in this. Well, I'll say that actually. Ignore that a little bit. I'm going up to third. We'll have a look at the lap times by the end of it. See uh, what they were like. Because of course if Glisk has been stuck in traffic the entire race yeah, third is actually a pretty good result when it's only really been me and Impega that have fought one another up at the front here. <sighs> oh, okay. Fastest lap. Hey! He would go the way of the hammer. I just couldn't keep up that pace. Just yeah, couldn't quite maintain it at that. It's close, though. It was very close. But actually, the top five were all very, very close. The Aston Martin's up there as well. Uh, the Bentley's not too far back either, all things considered. Ah, excellent, excellent race. Oh, and another one's broken down. Uh, 
excellent race, just couldn't quite keep on on top of the Buick. For our final race with these barges, we have come to a very nasty twisty circuit that we don't race particularly often. We've got 12! Whether it's going to stay 12 for the entirety of the race, I do not know. Uh, the Festival Circuit, I quite like this track actually. As far as tracks go, this one's quite good fun. It is a bit small and not always the best for it. Like A-Class cars are a bit iffy around here, but why not do something a little bit iffy? Because, I mean, these are all big boats. We'll see how they fare around around this second. I'm not expecting to do great here. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be terrible. I don't think it's gonna be the worst car here, but I'd expect those Buicks to be fast. The 850s are gonna be very quick here. Um, I don't have any long straights to utilize my top end at all. So yeah, we're going to uh, do what I can. Really score as many points as possible for the for the AMG. Uh, Gonna go past the one of the Buicks at least. There is a Jag actually was leading the way. Liam's Jag has had technical difficulties, but has looked very fast when stayed connected. So I mean that could even run away a little bit. Well, I think that's probably more of a power car than a handling car, and this is all about the handling. Uh, Jag ahead gets a big slide through all of there. Can I do anything? Nope. Oh, there's big switching. <laughs> Jag is all over the place. Might be able to get it down into turn one here. It's a big dive from the hammer. I can't stop it in time though. Oh, we're going to lose two places from that one. A little bit too much ambition from me there. I thought I could get away with that. We couldn't. And the Aston Martin is through. Uh, thank you, Xbox. I got the Series X and there's a button on the controller that instantly takes screenshots and I keep pressing it by accident and have to delete them. Apparently it failed to, it failed to upload because it was deleted the second I took it. Never mind. Don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> New stuff to get used to. Um, yeah, longbows, but I don't think we're keeping up with the vehicles further up. I think I'm too much of a power car here. Uh, we're not going to have an answer. Let's not do what we did last lap around. We learnt the difficulties at trying to get past at turn one. We learnt that it was a bad idea. Uh, oh, God, the understeer. Uh, yeah, I mean, cars on race tyres, those have gone for race tyres. Yeah, that's probably going to be quite quick around here. You know, just, just the grip. Just the sheer grip levels are going to be better. Can I do anything about the Jag? I think it's going to be one of those annoying, painstaking races where we just sit behind and look for a way past, but might not actually be able to find one. If we can get off the final corner well, we might be able to get through here nicely. Because we move around... Well, we normally move around a little less than the Jag, but that time around we got oversteer and ended up in the wall. Oh, we are to the door. There's a little bit ambitious. I wasn't actually going for an overtake, although I've got so much understeer anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really intending for an overtake at that section. We just ended. <laughs> we were alongside, like, oh crap. Well, we're going to have to go for that now. But uh, yeah, it wasn't the best positioned or timed one. Oh, come on, AMG. Get that front end to do something, please. Just just a little bit. Just, just a smidge would be good. With BMW leading from Jag from BMW. The 850's having a good time uh, around here. The highest place, the hammer's up in fourth. The. I don't know what happened to the Buicks. Neither of them have done anything around here, which does surprise me, as they really are that bad. I don't know why they'd be here, but they had bad luck, but still, that seems unusual. Uh, right. What can we do about finding a way past this Jag? We're still just looking at the back of an XJ. Well, okay, now I've got a close-up. <laughs> I'm not going to go for an overtake on that one. That was very much a... Uh, yeah, we've got a very, very good close-up at the back of the Jag. Um, that time around, though, that I had nothing to do with. That was a Jag getting all bobbly on the kerbs. Although that was too much speed for me. Oh, through there. It's still good. We're going to move across and defend. I do not want to give up this position, having worked so bloody hard to get it. Hug the bottom of the course. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I kind of hugged the bottom line. The uh, Jag tried a lower line, and there wasn't really one to be found. Okay. Let's just try and get away now and stay out of trouble for the remainder of this race. If we get a fast lap in at the end, that would be nice. Uh, just to see what sort of combat. It's not going to be oh, the best here. Uh, not not really going to be the best in terms of lap time. And the Buick just doesn't seem to be anywhere near as quick comparatively as it has elsewhere. That's curious. Maybe that's also not on race tyres? Possibly. Uh, 
who knows, whatever it is, it's certainly, yeah, struggling uh, compared to its performance in some of these tracks. Although, then again, I guess you say so am I a little bit after last race. Uh, we will slow down for these next couple of corners. It's going to be an 8.50 that uh, takes the victory here from, I think, an XJS. We're going to round these last couple of corners. Don't do anything stupid through here. I know how much my car understeers and then wants to slide out towards the wall. Don't ask what it's doing. If there's a bod, I don't know. But it's a sick place. It's middle of the pack. Uh, no speed. <laughs> there really wasn't any in my, in my hammer. Uh, the fastest car would actually be the Aston Martin by a thousandth of a second. Uh, that's very, very close. Yeah, my car was not was not great around there. The Buick was faster, but not by a huge amount. It certainly didn't quite have the pace of some of the cars at that track. And it's, yeah. And kind of what I expected, really, from, from the Hammer. So, on to conclusion time. And, well, if you wanted the best handling car, the BMW was the way to go. Any course with some corners on it, and the BMW was very, very good indeed. Surprising, because it is one of the heavier cars here. Uh, but, yeah, it did handle these circuits very, very well. Uh, I would say heavier cars, of course, yes, very weight, weight reduction has been done on these vehicles to make them to A-class, but still, it starts off heavier than everything else, so it's never going to be lightest. The Buick was a monster. Uh, it is one of the lighter vehicles here, and bloody fast down the straight. But if that's accelerating, top end, it was beaten, but it was very, very quick accelerating. It could use a lot more of its... Uh, speed perhaps than the Mercs. Uh, so yeah, as I said, a little bit of an oddball certainly the the Buick and also the smallest number of cylinders quite entertainingly in that one. Uh, the other oddballs, the Jaguar could work but they're very difficult to build um, because all the vehicles were using their standard engines and drive lines etc. The, the Jags standard engines not well, it's not great. Uh, it could be quick but yeah, what is tough to get the build right on that. The Bentley was more competitive than many expected. That's for sure. The Aston Martin at the right track could also be uh, pretty quick. Although some other tracks didn't quite so uh, work so well. The AMG, I mean, this is the one that I would have without a shadow of a doubt. I love the 850, don't get me wrong, but there is something amazingly cool about this Mercedes. I absolutely love it. Um, to drive, it's not bad. It has the top end on the Buick and really long circuits. It might be able to be the fastest there. It put up a good fight at Lakehurst, but just couldn't quite match the acceleration of the Buick. Yeah, it was not bad. It was it was not bad at all. Uh, my build for it was a little bit different to the other one, went for more for more speed, and it kind of worked in some some regards. Um, yeah, might not be the technically fastest car here, but is still to me the the coolest, the best looking by quite a mile. So there we go. It's good fun. I like racing these sort of cars. Got some interesting results. And yeah, the different builds kind of all work for each other. Uh, that though is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a uh, goodbye.